today on uh, on my podcast DTB, I have Leah Guzman. Uh, she is an art therapist uh, based out of Florida. Um, Leah, thank you so much for joining me and uh, and and agreeing to talk with us today about art therapy. Yes, thank you so much for having me, Daniel. I love talking about art therapy, and um, yeah, I'm excited to get started. Can you uh, tell us, just start by telling us a little bit about yourself and um, what it is that you do and, and what you got, what got you interested in art therapy? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I am a professional artist and art therapist, so I balance both worlds of making art for myself and I, I do sell it. Um, and then um, I practice art therapy. So I have, um, I see clients in person and I also see um, clients online. So I've been doing this for um, quite a bit. I graduated uh, in 2003 with my master's uh, in art therapy. So I've been practicing for about um, 18 years. And um, if you'd like, I could go ahead and and talk about how I got into it. And yes, please. um, Yeah. Okay. I'll talk about that. So uh, I've been an artist all my life. I've always been, you know, drawn to just creating and just expressing myself in that way came really naturally to me. Um, It was in high school where I I really had to use my art as a way to um, heal for myself. Um, My my mom, uh, we moved around a lot because of her job. She was a flight attendant. So I had to go to like three different high schools. And um, it just felt really turbulent for me emotionally, just like having to move and make new friends and leaving, um, leaving people. So I just really dove into to making more art for myself and started just putting it out there um, into like having like jurid shows and things like that. So it was actually at one of the jury shows where I was exhibiting um, one of the jurors asked, you know, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I was like, well, I don't know. I love art. I love psychology. Um, you know, I'm not really sure. And they're like, well, have you heard of art therapy? Uh, And I was like, no. So they were really cool. What they did was they sent me this newspaper article um, of this little boy who had an art therapist and he had, he was, had cancer and he was in the hospital. So imagine this little boy's like, you know, being prodded and just kind of stuck um, in the hospital. So he had an art therapist that would come in um, and, and do art therapy with him. And she had him um, creating little Pac-Man eating away, she had him drawing out, eating away the cancer cells. So part of that, you know, uh, it was empowering him, you know, it was giving him that strength that like, wow, I can do this. I can like beat this cancer. So he he eventually went into, to remission and he was just really grateful of, of that experience. And I was like, that's what it is. I was like, that's my connection. Because like, I knew that I was making art for myself to help me deal with my emotions. And I was like, Mm -hmm. I know that I can do this for someone else. Um, so that's kind of where um, the seed was planted. And then when um, I went to um, my undergraduate, I actually went to Georgia State University and I, I focused on art. I did sculpture and um, I did some painting classes and uh, I had a little bit of time. I, I went to art school. I went to San Francisco Art Institute um, for about a year and and then to, um, I eventually got my master's in, in art therapy at Florida State University. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Great journey. Um, I love, I love the story about the boy that you told in the hospital. Um, how, let's see, with that being like kind of your inspiration and that, that nice, that nice gentleman kind of introducing you to the idea of art therapy. Um, once you got into art therapy, where there, I imagine many different avenues you could take. Um, did it, does a career in art therapy look like what you thought it would look like before you got into it? Uh, kind of what your vision was way back then, or how has maybe that vision changed over time? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. So, well, back then when I got my master's in art therapy, you know, I graduated and um, to get your, your master's in art therapy, it's really similar to getting your license in mental health counseling. It's basically the same track. Okay. Um, it's just that you're using, utilizing, uh, the art 
to um, help people express themselves. So, so basically you are, you know, you're learning about different types of therapy. You're learning about gestalt therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, but you're using the art as a way to um, help people express themselves, right? So you're learning about all these theoretical backgrounds. So when I graduated, I, you know, I really loved um, the idea of working with youth and um, that's kind of where I started. I ended up working at a crisis shelter for runaway youth. Okay. And, um, but no one really knew about art therapy. So like when I was actually looking for a job, it was very difficult for me because mm. they're like, there's no thing that said like, art, we're looking for an art therapist. <laughs> 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 it was more of, you know, they're looking for a clinician. They're looking for someone, um, you know, with a different title, but then I had to let them know, well, I can do this. You know, I uh -huh. can um, come in and, and, and I have this gift of using the art. So it was really about like selling myself in that way and educating people because it was so many people. It was like, I had never heard of this. Uh, you know, wh what are you doing? Um, and they didn't understand, um, just like, you know, what that, what the, um, the, the meat of it, you know, like of how yeah. it can be so, so powerful. So that's where I started. And, um, I actually um, work in the schools as well. Okay. So the being able to help adolescents um, that are at risk um, express themselves um, has been really powerful. Um, but it, there has been an evolution um, with my practice because I just feel that I, I want more people to experience it and like to let people know. So I started actually offering um, my services online. This is even before the pandemic where everyone was like okay. Zooming and things like that. Um, and I just knew it was, uh, I wanna say it was like maybe like three or four years ago where I just started putting it out there. Um, I started putting my, more of my art out there and, and just letting people know, hey, I am offering services if you, know, you wanna try it out and or if you know if you need it. So um, yeah, so putting myself out there and um, just letting people know it was available, uh, it was really great feedback. And it's even online, I think it's just as powerful. It's like you, they, you can work with someone and lead them um, you know, through with whatever goals that they want to achieve, hmm. lead them through that, that process, um, of, of healing. Yeah. So it's, it's whatever their needs are, whether they're suffering from anxiety or depression or PTSD, and it's kind of blocking them to getting what, where they want to go. You can uh -huh. use that art as a tool to, um, uncover it, process those emotions and get those coping skills so that you can, um, you know, manage and, and make good decisions moving forward. Yeah. What, um, so kind of how you said how art, art therapy wasn't really out there. Not a lot of people really knew about it or understood it. Um, I, I, so I'm currently going to a, a graduate program for clinical psychology. Um, we don't have any like art therapy classes or courses, um, but I've read about it. I've, I've read of like, you know, psychologists a long time ago who talked about using art and therapy. And so I think that, even, you know, I don't really know much. That's what I wanted to talk with you today is I wanted to learn more about it and kind of get a feel for what you guys do. Um, and so I think that's neat that you guys, you know, you said that you, you study like cognitive behavioral therapy or gestalt therapy and things like that. Um, can you kind of explain maybe the different ways that you can use art therapy? Um, when I imagine it, I am at like, so the explanation that you gave of drawing the Pac-Man eating away the cancer cells and that being kind of like a cathartic or therapeutic thing that that's helpful. Um, when I, is there like, what about people who are not artistic or what are different type of maybe interventions or um, techniques that an art therapist might use? Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I would say that usually there would be an inclination uh, for the person to like want to use art, right? So uh -huh. it's um, a lot of, most of the clients that I meet with, they're already like artists or they're creatives. Okay. They think, you know, they have, they want to express themselves in that way. You can, uh -huh. you can practice art therapy and not have any experience as long as you're open to, uh, you know, trying out the materials and, and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say most of the majority of, of clients that I've had are, um, you know, they've either had traditional talk therapy and they're just like, I just want something else. I, you know, I really want to just like try something else a little bit more expressive and I'm an artist. So 
when you create art, what's the beautiful part about it is that, you know, there's so much like symbolism and, and metaphors and, and things like that, that you can pull into creating that piece and you can learn from it. And I always feel that, you know, we, you know, whatever's in your head is coming out, it's expressing itself, and then you get to see it and it has a message for you. So that's the really, you know, potent part of the art therapy practice is that you are, you're giving that space to um, make art about your life and, and use metaphors um, to symbolically express yourself. And then you can, um, I feel like you can, you can heal from it, but you can also manifest from it so that you can, you know, put things into your life. So I'll just kind of give you like a case example so that because I you like the Pac-Man idea. Um, for example, I'm, uh, one of my clients separated from uh, her husband and mm. she's, you know, debating like, you know, do I want to go back to this person? Do I want to be with this person? So a part of um, the therapeutic process is, you know, really just going into those emotions and figuring out what her triggers were, like what was happening in the relationship that made you, um, you know, become so over emotional and, and stressed and she had past trauma. So we had to, you know, we had to explore that about those triggers and what was coming up in her relationship and learning how to create her own boundaries and learn how to create your own self-care. So how does that translate into the art? Well, she came to session. She's like, oh, I just had this big blow up with my, with my husband and this, and this, well, let's draw it out. What did that look like? And, and she was like, oh, it was like a tornado. It just felt like it was, a, yeah, she was to describe it. And I was like, let's put that on, onto that paper. Right. And so, uh, you know, drawing that out and it's like, well, where does it, you know, where does that healing come from? Like, what do we need to explore um, on that journey and, you know, where she wants wants to go so that would be like moving moving her to, down to that path she's like oh i want to just be on a beach and i want to be experiencing uh you know the the peace and i want to like, i want to get there i want to get to that place so it's 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 metaphorically like creating pieces of art that are expressing herself in that way so that she can she can see it and it's fun because you get to see an actual art series of of the journey and exploring the parts that she needs healing but also the parts that she wants to manifest like she, you know, whether, and she can also be, because when you're in a, a place of darkness, you are coming from that fight or flight, um, you know, part of your brain where you're not thinking clearly, you know, you yeah, just like, yeah. want to run, you want to, but part of the art process and that's, it's like, it increases that neuroplasticity is that it's moving to that frontal cortex. So it's like, you can start problem solving, you know, and mm. you can say like really look clearly like, well, that's not the direction. That's not how I want to respond in this situation. I want to, be clear. I want to make good decisions and you can draw out those decisions, wow. you know, draw out like, okay, when this, when he says this, this is how I can respond, you know, versus I can responding how I was responding before. So I hope that kind of gives you an idea of yeah. it's, it's a journey, but it's very intuitive too. It's like, they, you know, you, you're like, you, you're taking them on this path, but uh -huh. you're listening to their needs too, where they're at and what happened during the week. And, and then guiding them so they can get those tools so that they can um, make good decisions. Yeah, no, that was very, that was very helpful. Very beautifully put. Thank you. Do you ever have people uh, or do people ever draw out um, mandalas or their dreams? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I love mandalas. Um, okay. Actually um, I have a new book coming out. Uh, it's called, I have it here. It's not, this is just like the cover of it, but um, we do a lot of mandala work in here. Um, yeah. And the mandalas, you know, they're really grounding. Um, you know, it's just, it's very meditative and, and calming and gets you very focused. And I love working with affirmations, uh -huh. um, especially because uh, if you get stuck like in uh, like a limiting belief and you can, you know, change that belief by using affirmations, repeating yourself. So uh, as part of that manifesting is you can write in your mandalas. I like doing a lot of writings and then in the pattern oh. play. So um, yeah, I, I, it's, I think it's a certain time and place of when you want to do a mandala. Um, okay. It's really great for ADHD. If there's if someone that's suffering with, you know, with um, not being able to like focus it's mm. great to, to use a mandala. It's uh, very common. It's great to use in groups, um, mm. having everyone to come together and create on the mandala and sharing that space. So yeah, there are like times and places where um, you can do that. What was the other one besides the mandala you're asking about? Uh, dreams. 
Oh, the dreams. Yeah. yeah, I I don't specialize in dreams. Dreams are important. I think, you know, I, I love um, like even remembering my own dreams. I don't always remember them, but I always <laughs> like try to make those connections. And I, I'm really into symbolism with the art. So uh, even for myself, I look things up I'm like, oh, that that's what that's that's meaning. But if my client comes to me and they want to, you know, learn more, you know, definitely um, we'll look them up and see how it relates to their life. But there's, yeah, a whole Jungian approach. Um, I, I know of uh, an art therapist that that's her specialty, it's like dream analysis and um, this Jungian approach. So if someone just wanted to do that, I would refer her to, to that person who, who specializes in it. Yeah. Okay. And so can you tell us about the courses that you have? I saw on your website, you have um, a couple of different courses. Can you tell us about the courses you offer um, and a little bit more about your private practice? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I have, yeah, I have different avenues for people because what I've learned about like when I've come out on, online is that people have different needs at different times. So, um, the one of the courses that I have is a, it's a membership group. So if it's anybody that wants to just, you know, dive in and as a group um, on Zoom where, uh, you know, you want to try some new materials, try some um, art therapy techniques and um, be able to share in community. Um, I do have that. So that's just like a monthly membership. We meet a couple of times a month and we have different themes. So that's one of them. Um, for those who want to do more of a deep dive and really understand kind of what's going on um, with their life and their, their patterns of behavior, if something's not working, um, then that's when I offer the art therapy online so that they can just have their own sessions. So that's uniquely for them. Okay. And then there's kind of like at the highest level, which is um, my signature program. And that's called the Art of Healing and Manifesting program. And what's unique about this is that, yeah, it does have those deep dive of the art therapy and coaching to get, you know, to, to um, level up your life. Cause we look at every area of your life because everything is interconnected. Mm-hmm. And that program also includes um, teaching the skills of how to, you know, take what you're good at. So whether if you want to put your art into the world, or if you want to um, have some sort of business, um, whether you want to have like services or workshops or retreats or things like that. So I teach you the skills of also how to um, level up and and make a business using your skills. Yeah. So that, that part is fun because I've worked with other art therapists who are like putting their online practice out there. I've, you know, I've worked with artists who are, you know, want to learn how to just build their confidence and learn a structure of how to, to put their work out into the world. Because that was a huge thing for me. Um, um, it was a big learning curve of being an art therapist, being an artist, but I never shared my artwork with anybody. And so it came to the point my life was like, I need to like step up my game. Like I knew, I know I want to like, like share it and sell it. Um, so I had, you know, I took all these training and, and marketing uh, in business so that I could learn how to do that. So I was like, I want to be able to use that skills to teach other artists because I really feel, I mean, that's the part that's really frustrating is that you go to school and you can learn how to make a beautiful piece of art. You can learn how to become the most amazing art therapist, but if you don't know how to put yourself out there, market yourself to let people know how amazing you are or what they're going to you know, benefit from, from what you're doing. Yeah. Um, it's, you're going to get stuck. And mm. so that's where I felt like I had to do that deep dive for myself. And now I want to help other people like level up um, and, and share their gifts. So that's, yeah. So that's what I, what I've been offering um, in my, my private practice and my online world. Okay. That sounds great. Um, how, so you, you mentioned you um, the artwork that you create. You also sell, and it's it's out there. Um, have you had some pretty good? Um, I guess when when did you start selling your own artwork, and um, have you gained more and more kind of I don't know notoriety or in the in the community? Oh wow! Um, well, okay, so what happened was it was actually one of these like dark night of the souls experiences for me, um, like selling my own artwork. So, so that's what I say. Like, I think it was a big learning curve yeah. of putting it out there. It's because, um, you know, I was practicing my art therapy, um, and I, I got married, I had two children and I kind of suddenly stopped making my own art oh. and I didn't realize how, how much it was affecting me because I was just, 
you know, I was doing everything for everyone else. I was, uh -huh. I had kind of that, that people pleaser. I feel like I'm an overcome, like I've, I've gotten over that. Like I've had to learn, <laughs> learn how to like put boundaries up and really, and, and, um, make time for myself, but I was in a dark place and I actually had to, I got an art therapist as well. I was like, you know what? I need help. I don't know how to get out of this hole. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I got some art therapy for myself and that's when I realized I was like, Oh, I really want my own studio. I really want to make art and I want to put it out there. And so just those, those baby steps of like learning, well, how much do I sell my paintings for? And, um, you know, where, you know, where do I fit in, in this world? Who, who would want to buy my, my work? Yeah. All of that, um, I think kind of it complemented my art therapy practice because as I was, um, putting my work out there, um, whether it is like in a show or in a gallery or just, um, even online, mm. it, it really matched the art therapy as well, because my art is, is healing and powerful. And mm -hmm. I had to learn that uh, for myself. Like that was actually one of my affirmations for myself is that okay. I was, I would make art and I'm like, who cares if I'm making art? And I was like, I do. Like I had to really <laughs> say like, this is so therapeutic for me. This brings me so much joy. And as I share it, I realized other people would, was, were getting joy from it. Uh -huh. um, so that there was like a huge learning curve of, of putting myself out there and um, getting good feedback, thank goodness. And, and that's where I wanted to, to bring that art therapy as well. So mm -hmm. was, that's why I say, like I balanced both worlds. I think I had a struggle of, I needed to either do one or the other, uh -huh. um, or I wasn't good enough, but mm -hmm. then I was like, I can do both. I can, I can, and that's pretty much, I feel like my purpose of being here is, is to be able to do both. It's, mm -hmm. um, of, to make them, but yeah. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's great. I'm so I'm so happy that you were able to find a way to do both like that. Um, and one thing I love about the whole the art therapy and and art therapists, um, I love people who create. And it's so easy to tear down and to criticize, um, but it's a lot more difficult to create something and let alone create something beautiful. And so. I love, I love what you're doing and it's, it's fun to hear your story and hear about how it's uh, playing out for you. Yeah. How about you? Are you a creative? I, um, I would like to be more creative, but uh -huh. this podcast is one way for me to try and uh, show a little bit of my creative side, I guess. Um, just to, I just want to produce and put things out there uh, for other people. Um, and I'm not, I, I like to draw, but I'm not super artistic. Uh, I can copy, but I can't, I can't create, you know, like. Well, that's the starting. Yeah, uh, that's the starting is that you can copy something and then add your spice. You know, like mm -hmm. you add something else. You could take two copies, but you're putting them together and that's what makes it yours. Uh -huh. right? The artists steal from each other all the time. It just, it's just <laughs> about making it your own. So don't, don't, don't downplay yourself. You all have okay. to start somewhere. And I even say like coloring pages, like people will say, that's not art therapy, but you know what? Sometimes it's the, it's like the gatekeepers. Like you, at least you, you mm. try the coloring page and you think it's fun. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, let's try that next step. You know, sometimes it's just the, it's a stepping stone. Mm. So maybe it might be something you want to try, you know? You want to yeah. <laughs> that's encouraging. <laughs> yeah. Most definitely. Um, let's see. I wanted to ask. So, there's in 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 our in our therapy, uh, we do assessment. So clinical psychologists do assessment, and they use like different types of assessments, like IQ, IQ testing, personality test, and one of them is a projective test where you have you might have you know it's on movies. You give a client a piece of paper, and you say like draw a house or a person or a tree. And then uh, as a psychologist, you're supposed to like interpret their drawing. Um, is there any type of like interpretive drawings that art therapists do? Um, or is it mainly about, you know, like expressions and metaphors? Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> Um, there is an assessment that uh, I use, uh, it's called the silver drawing test. Okay. And so this one has research around it um, where it's looking at certain indicators for cognitions, like you should be able to draw this certain way or have these certain, oh. um, you know, 
like the baseline, like looking at certain indicators that will say, okay, well, cognitively you're at a certain level, right? Like uh-huh. you can understand and comprehend you've mastered this, or if you haven't, then, then you're not. And then there's uh-huh. another part of the um, assessment where it's looking at the emotional component, like looking at like, um, are you identifying with the person that's that, that you drew and the objects that, that you picked to go with it? Um, you know, what is your self image um, and emotionally what the theme of the story? Is it, is it that you've conquered a goal? Did you achieve something or did, are you feeling helpful, like helpless? You know, mm-hmm. there are certain indicators there. That's the only time where I feel like it's kind of standard because everything is like rated and has a number yeah. to it. And if you met certain, certain things and okay, you fit in this little box. Other than that, that you really, um, as our therapist, we don't want to project into okay. the artist's work because yeah. um, it, that's, it could get really messy if you did something like that because you really want to hear from the artist what their story is mm. um, and what that means for them. Because if you're projecting to the work and you say, oh, well, that person's suicidal because they drew a knife and a, the but that might not be it. Uh-huh. And, and, it's, and so it's really important to, to have the words, the power of the words to go uh-huh. with, with the story. Um, okay. it, you want to definitely notice, you know, all the different details and that's what gives you that opportunity to question and say, Hey, how is this um, working for you? What does this mean? How does this relate to your life? You definitely want to question them um, mm. to be able to, you know, talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, yeah, I, cause I, I read in a, I read in a book that about an art therapist, um, she was seeking consultation and she mentioned that with this drawing, the way that it was, um, it was like maybe the lady who drew it had been the victim of like a violent crime or like sexual, uh, trauma or something like that. So, but I was thinking how, how. Yeah. So I just didn't know if there was some type of, or if she was doing something completely different. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, you can speculate, uh-huh. but I, I wouldn't say that, like, I would say question. I would say you'd have yeah. to, it'd be really important to, to question and just say, well, then, then putting it on there, they, they could have, but I would uh-huh. say it doesn't really hold weight unless you hear it from, from the person. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've had like parents that the, the you know they they're like, okay, if I bring my my daughter to you, do you you talk or you just do the art? Uh-huh. Like the, I get questions like that, so it's yeah. it's, and I'm like, we do both because her art is very important, and I but I want to know why is it important to her, and uh-huh. and I can guide her by knowing what this is about and, you know, finding her strengths, um, in her life and in her art. And then wherever that goal is that we're leading to, I think the words are important. I mean, I've worked with select mute as well, where uh-huh. they, they don't talk and yeah, we will, you know, we'll just create art. And the goal is for them to gain that confidence so that they can feel comfortable. You know, you establish that rapport so they feel comfortable talking with you. Hmm. Um, but I think talk is really important to go with, or even writing, um, being able to process the emotion. So it's like if you have the art, uh-huh. um, and it's called reflective distancing. So you're giving yourself that opportunity to see what it's about. So you can reflect on it by looking at it. You can reflect on it by talking about it, mm-hmm. writing about it. I feel like they go hand in hand in, yeah. in the process. Yeah. Um the, the difference is, I think that I think where a lot of people get stuck or are not understanding of art therapy is like, for example, I have another book that I wrote a couple of years ago called Essential Art Therapy Exercises. This actually pissed off a lot of art therapists because they're like, well, why did you write art therapy exercises? Because art therapy is really about mm. the therapeutic relationship yeah. and not just giving like a cookbook of giving somebody some this random thing, right? Yeah. And I understand their argument. Uh, and um, and I was like, well, this is kind of a collection of the past 16 years at the time, uh-huh. of tools, techniques um, that have worked at the right time with certain clients, right? So uh-huh. it is more, I felt like more of a guidebook for clinicians or maybe, you know, other social workers have, have written me and said, oh my God, I love your book. I've used it with, you know, and if it fits, that's fabulous. Uh-huh. But the thing is, if, if a, um, 
a regular person just wants to try something out, go uh -huh. ahead, try it out. You can try out a technique, you could reflect on it. Um, but the thing is where I think the deep work happens is because when you meet with a therapist, this is where they're going to support you and help you see like different perspectives on things. Because when we have like subconscious beliefs that are stopping us, mm. we don't know it. Right. Yeah. Um, and like, for example, I'll give you an example of a client who like an artist, um, she, you know, wanted to make money, but she doesn't understand why she's always broken. She's always uh, manifesting lovers that are just like not the right fit. Well, she was always telling herself things that um, kept showing up for her, like, oh, I can't afford that. Or, you know, I, you know, I don't, I'm not worthy of this. Mm. And so when you're telling yourself things and not even realizing it, you're only going to get, keep getting the, sa the same thing. So when you have the therapist there to say, hey, well, why don't we just change that story? Because you don't even realize that you're telling a story that's not working for you. So that's yeah. where the deep work comes in, where you can, um, you know, help someone reflect on that and then create that new story create this new imagery that artwork and how powerful it is mm -hmm. um, i have one client um she was working on manifesting a lover and um healing her money uh monster her her money story and when we got to her money honey of drawing out um you know what she really wanted actually her money honey ended up being this um guy figure and it's like you can have it all it's actually in, in my new book there's a picture of it um it's uh it was amazing within like six months she manifested a, a guy that a lover that looks just like the guy that she drew i was like how did you do that that's just crazy um so it's it's really powerful that's what i like i love about art is that you can like create your world with it it's like you mm bring that energy um, into you. So I don't know, I, sorry, I think I've went on a tangent there, but oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just trying to connect the dots of seeing yeah. how it all comes full circle. Would you, would you ever have, let's say you, a parent brought their child to you for therapy and for our therapy and the child um, didn't really speak a whole lot. They, they said a few words here and there, but they did, they, uh, did art real, real well. They were like, you know, cooperative and everything. Um, is there, is there ever a time where you would look at their drawings and like, and, and then maybe, you know, interpret something that's going on in their life or that's happened to them, even if they don't talk about it? Like, does that make sense? Yeah, well, that's what the art is for, is that they, they uh -huh. also, it might be uncomfortable to talk about. Uh -huh. um, and I might not have to like put it in their face of, oh, that's what that is. Uh -huh. But I want to give them the, the tools um, and and guide them through the art making uh -huh. process. Well, let's do art about this um, so that I always want them to feel uplifted. Right. I always want them to feel like they're we're going on the street, but there's maybe something dark happened in their life. And this gives them the opportunity to metaphorically put it out uh -huh. into the world in a safe way. Uh -huh. But if they don't tell me, oh, I got was molested by blah, 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 I'm not calling DCF. I'm not yeah. gonna say just because it's in their artwork, yeah. I'm not gonna put unless they tell me. If they tell uh -huh. me, then I will say, okay, well, this needs to be investigated and we need to go to this next level. But it, art is a safe way. And when they're ready to talk about it, you're, that's what the point is, is to give, give those tools mm. so that they feel safe, so that they that we'd be creating safe places. We'd be creating um, strength shields. We'll be creating like about what they're good at. You know, we'll, I'm building them up so that they feel strong and they can feel like they can take care of themselves and be able to talk about it. Yeah, okay. Does that makes sense? Yeah, got it. Okay. Sorry, I got stuck there. <laughs> Okay. Um, I think that I, as you're asking the questions, it's good because I think I'm, it gives you like different scenarios of, of how it works. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. When I first um, started, I remember in my, my internship, uh -huh. I worked at a school and, you know, I kind of thought that, you know, that this girl had really extreme behaviors and I was like, oh man, I wonder if she's being abused at home. Like things in my head that I was thinking, and I was like, is that why I'm here? It's to find out she's been abused. I really want her to draw out her abuse. No, that's not why I'm there. You know, uh -huh. my purpose of being there, this is like one of my first ahas I remember, um, is like, 
is because I want to uplift her. I want her to find, I want her to find her strengths. I want her to have an outlet to put all this crazy energy that she had, you know, in a safe way, in a constructive way versus destructive. Mm. So that's the main um, objective. Got it. Got it. Can you, uh, so you, you mentioned these two books that you wrote are, these are the, do you have three now? Is that? Yeah. So I, the first one, I don't have it with me to show you, but it's, um, the first one's called Rad is Mad. Okay. And when I was talking about my whole dark night of the soul, when I went to go see an art therapist, Uh Uh that's where the book was created. My son was about five and he was obsessed with monster trucks. Okay. And um, so the rat is mad rat is this monster truck who goes around and bashes and crashes into other trucks. And then he has this realization that, you know, he really wanted friends, um, but he needs to learn how to be nice and take care of himself. So <laughs> <laughs> he has this wise old truck come and help him. So it was basically a metaphor of how I was feeling. I was like mad and sad and um, not being very nice to myself. And so he goes to a car wash, uh, takes care of himself and he gets all these friends. So I created the book and then I was like, I could, I started using it with my, my little, my little art therapy students. Um, but it was definitely like a reflection of where I was, um, as well. Uh-huh. So it was fun. Like, I, I, I honestly, I feel like I made that book just to help with my own healing. Cause when I, after I made that book, I was like, well, I don't even care about the book anymore. I just want to make art. Cause like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, a, oh, big aha for me. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then, uh, and then the the next the last two that you just showed me, um, I'll 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 those are on Amazon, correct? Well, yeah, this one essentially on is, is on Amazon. This one is uh, still being proofread, so I'm hoping okay. within like a month or two, it's going to be released. It okay. will be on Amazon. Um, it'll definitely be on my site, and so and have different places where it'll be available. Okay, I'll link the um, I'll link your site and uh your books in the description in the video yeah. awesome thank you yeah um and then is there anything else kind of like parting words or uh anything that i didn't ask about or we covered today that you would like to that you would like to mention or or say um yeah i would just say if anyone is like, curious or interested um you're welcome you know there's many different avenues of where you can try our therapy and um you're welcome to join us in our membership and um you know be in community with people but yeah just i think just nurturing yourself that having a self-care practice is like the biggest thing that i that i teach so just take some time for yourself and, and be creative in whatever outlet whether it's creating a podcast or taking a bath it doesn't matter just do something for yourself that lifts you up and makes you feel good yeah good yeah no i think it's uh i think the self-care is a great point and um and like you said whether it be you know creating a podcast like this or a bath um uh, it seems like a lot of what your message is, is putting yourself first and being kind to yourself, showing yourself some grace, um, you know, uh, being uplifting in many ways. And, um, and I really like the, the group um, that you mentioned that you, that you run where it's like once a month and you guys, you all do your artwork and then come together. I think that that's, that sounds like a lot of fun. And um that sounds like something that would be very uplifting for anybody to do. And even someone like me who is not super artistic, I would love to try something like that, you know? Yeah, you're more than welcome. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And it's yeah, that's the part where we just have to give ourselves that room to to play and create and mess up and make something ugly. And <laughs> and that's what really about our theory is about. It's like just being cathartic and then no judgment. It's just it's just there. You just made it and it's okay. But that's what sounds most fun to me, like painting outside the lines, you know? Yes. Well, yeah. usually like people that go to art school, you have to go to art school to learn all the rules, but then when you get out, you have to break them all. Like you got uh-huh. really, to find you, you know, yeah. what is your essence? What is your visual vocabulary? Like what's your authentic voice type of thing? Mm. Yeah. All right, Leah, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. It's been very informative. And um, I'm, yeah, again, I just uh, appreciate what you're doing and I admire it. Oh, thank you so much, (laughs) Daniel. It was wonderful talking to you and um, I'm excited to share the love. Thank you.